your life. So today I want to talk about how networking is changing right now. And I picked three specific topics, which I think have a lot of profound impact on how we do networking. And then bridge back to how this changes how we do networking for all this time. The first one I want to talk about is the impact of cloud and mobile. So when you think back, you know, five years ago, networking in a large organization pretty much was the networking of hardware. And that's changing because currently we're undergoing one of the biggest revolutions we've had uh, in, uh, in general IT ever. Right? So the third time that we've seen a structural transition of how IT is done. The first big transition was when we went from the early computers to mainframes. The second big transition was when we went from mainframes to PCs, to client server computing. And now we're going from client server computing to cloud. So what does that change? When you were managing networking in the past, you primarily managed hardware. Right? You had servers in your data center, you plug cables from one server to another server, and through a switch, you configure that switch. You may still have to do a little bit of that in the future, but I think in many cases, you will no longer control the hardware. And let me explain to you this, uh, why I think this is the case. So when I prepared this talk, uh, it was actually on the weekend, and uh, you know, we have three pretty noisy kids, so I was sitting in a coffee shop. I was uh, sitting at Starbucks. And um, I was also working on a demo we were doing on Amazon. And uh, here this, on the side, you see a, a packet trace from my laptop to the server on Amazon I was using. And it first goes over the Starbucks network, it's the coffee shop. Then it goes over Comcast, which is their service provider, and then over the Amazon network. So I was doing work, but none of the network equipment involved was actually owned by VMware, my company. All of the network equipment was owned by somebody else. For my CIO, that's a problem, because he is still responsible for anything that happens. Right? If I create a data compromise and I leak data, uh, he would get fired, <laughs> but he doesn't control any of the hardware anymore. And I think in the future, this will be pretty normal. If you think about how this looks like for a CIO, right? Today, you only have your on-prem data center. In the future, you may have some workloads on premise, some workloads on Amazon, some workloads maybe on other public clouds, maybe Azure, maybe Google. And you're responsible for everything that happens across these clouds. And that creates a huge problem because the technology that's used by each of these different types of clouds is different. Right? I have some kind of networking solution for all the stack deployment locally. I have another type of networking solution I'm using Amazon with VPCs, using Azure networking for Azure. The technologies are different, the configurations are different, the teams are different. How can I make sure that, that I'm secure across these different silos? So I think what networking has to evolve to is become a platform that allows you to control networking across these different clouds. Otherwise, networking can be successful in a cloud age. More specifically, you will need a networking solution that allows you to define networks that span clouds. I want to have workloads on Amazon and an OpenStack that are now on the same virtual switch, on the same virtual router, right? with a firewall in between, or a load balancer across the two. I need to define these things, but it's no longer confined to the data center. It's not confined to multiple data centers, multiple clouds. So that's the number one thing, which I think will change network, the impact of the clouds. The second big change in networking is that today, I think Martin Casado phrased it that way first, the application is the network, right? or the application is driving the network. And let me explain what I mean with this. So imagine you're sitting here in the audience today. You, know, you have your, you have your uh, smartphone, you know, and you're, you're tweeting about the talk I'm giving. What happens with this tweet? Right? It gets sent somewhere up into the cloud. It'll hit 
literally dozens of servers, of firewalls, of switches, of routers, of services. This, this tweet will get copied, will get uh, you know, indexed, will get stored, will get backed up. The simple action that you're doing there, sending a tweet, triggers a very complex application that's composed of many services on the back end. And, and tweeting is just an example, right? Pretty much really any enterprise app that you want to provision consists of many different services that all have to work together to make it successful. Right? Because an application just runs on a single server pretty much doesn't exist anymore. And provisioning these applications is very difficult. Right? You have to touch literally dozens of systems, configure them, connect them to each other, make sure the configuration of both ends is the same. And if you make a mistake, that brings us to the second problem, which is troubleshooting. It's often very easy to understand that your distributed application is not working. It's very hard to figure out why. Which of these problems is, is the bottleneck? Which of these services that you're using is the bottleneck? Is this maybe a firewall? Is it, well, why is the packet getting dropped like, as, it, as it goes through the system? Um, you know, I've, I've seen a case personally where it took an organization six weeks just to figure out the reason for it because they lost packets you know, between two virtual machines because it would take such a complex path through the data center. And the third problem is security. Because configuring the network has gotten so complex, in many cases today, people configure the network once. And once it's configured, they don't touch it anymore. And that's really bad because the attackers, they're constantly evolving. They're constantly trying to find new vulnerabilities, new weaknesses. And if you don't react to that, if you don't adapt your security posture, eventually you'll get compromised and you'll leave data, which is very, very bad for them. So the, the application has become the network. The application is driving the network topology. And as a response to the application driving the network, we're seeing a new class of infrastructure emerge that's really targeted at, at building these distributed applications. And of course, you can do that with VMs. And, 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 uh, but what we're seeing more and more is that on top of an open stack deployment or VMware deployment, we're actually using a platform as a service or containers. And that's the third thing I want to talk about, containers. So I'm kind of I'm a huge fan of containers. I think it'll have a huge impact of how we deploy applications um, in the enterprise. Um, and uh, you know, the, the, the basic idea is that instead of having this opaque bundle of an application, you know, a platform and uh, the operating system underneath, we can layer this in a more intelligent way, and we can deploy this in a much more efficient way. Right? This is a great technology, and I'm, I'm sure it will be successful. Now, when I started talking to customers, you know, in enterprises, they actually have containers in production. I asked them, how are you deploying these containers? And they basically showed me this picture here. Right? So they're running the containers inside of a virtual machine on top of a hybrid. The first time I saw this, I was like, okay, clearly you guys don't know what you're doing. You don't understand this, right? The whole idea of containers is to no longer have virtual machines. Why are they doing this? And in fact, you know, it was even worse. If you looked at the networking, um, suddenly multiple layers of virtual networking. Right? You have your, your hypervisor, so maybe using KVM. You have maybe a vSwitch, like open vSwitch, to provide your, you know, the, the, the low level networking, the open stack level networking. And then on top of it, you have a container host that has yet another vSwitch, you know, or another similar technology like a flannel or a rudder. It's providing networking between the containers. I was like, okay, this is completely crazy, right? You don't have two layers of networking and a hypervisor. It's like, aren't containers supposed to simplify this? Now, it turns out, this is actually a very good architecture. And I think, I've since been convinced that this is probably the right architecture. Um, the reason is that, Containers, just like virtual machines, can get compromised. Right? Somebody can hack into a container. And if that happens, you want to make sure the person that breaks into a container can not break out and expand in your data center. And the safest way to do this is to take the entire container host, wrap it into a VM, you know, put a hypervisor underneath, and then use virtual networking down there to basically segment uh, the network for the containers. And you do it at two levels because you know there's different security properties for uh, a container um, uh, 
was compromised for cyber-compromised criminals. So I think actually we're looking at a future where at least some, some customers will run three layers of networking. You have a hardware layer, you have an infrastructure layer networking, and then you have a platform layer networking on top. So networking is going to get a lot more complicated. <coughs> so what does all of this mean for if you're doing open stack and if you're providing the infrastructure as a service? In, in the past, when we thought about open stack networking, you know, it was pretty simple. You had a couple of workloads. You know, maybe it's uh, KVM hypervisors with uh, you know uh, virtual machines on top. You created a virtual network underneath. Right? Maybe you use uh, you know, the simple Linux bridging. Maybe you use um, you know something uh, more sophisticated like OBS with the neutron plugin. Uh, maybe you use NSX, right, our product. Um, all of that on a, on a physical network. Now. How does this look like in the future, right? In the future, you have still your KVM virtual machines, or you know, maybe VMware virtual machines using VIO. You know, you have uh, you know maybe other hypervisors. You may have containers as endpoints. You may put workloads in public clouds. You want to take all of these different workloads, and ideally, you want to have one way of managing the network connectivity across all of them. So at VMware, about uh, I want to say nine months ago. So I posed the challenge to my engineering team and said, look, this is the problem that a CIO or a director of networking in the future will have, right? If you're running a complex network, you have all of these endpoints. What can we do to physically address them? And what can we do to create a networking platform that goes across all of this? And um, so we recently announced a new version of NSX, you know, which of course works with uh, OpenStack. I'm not sure if, if it's why they know, but currently the, the largest NSX deployment in the world is actually runs with, uh, with OpenStack and KVM. So the, the, we did a, a demo where we showed how we can take an on-premise deployment of NSX, right, which could run with OpenStack, um, where you have a couple of VMs, and you then cloudburst to something like Amazon. So this will be spun up 50 new workloads in Amazon, and uh, you know they had a, a little agent there and the right policy. And they were all mapped back to a virtual switch that we had previously defined on premises. So what this means is that while these workloads were running on a cloud, right, in terms of network topology, it was exactly as if they were running inside of our OpenStack deployment. Meaning these virtual machines had the same IP addresses as our OpenStack VMs, these virtual machines had the uh, they're behind the same load balancer as my OpenStack VMs, they were behind the same firewall, the egress through the same enterprise edge was as, as if they were running locally, but now I can get as many of them as I want very, very quickly. Right? So if you're running a data center, this is huge. It gives you a lot of flexibility. And this is just an example of what you can do with this technology. So when we see networking go in the future, it's really that it's no longer about getting a packet from one physical server to another physical server, not even from one virtual machine to another virtual machine. Right? Tomorrow networking will be about taking all these different heterogeneous endpoints that you have and providing basically the logical networking on top, defining what endpoints can talk to what other endpoints. You know, defining through what firewalls do these packets have to go, through what services do they have to go. If, if you were doing using a mobile device you know, that's approved by a company and you want to talk to an Amazon workload by a company, and this Amazon workload then wants to talk to an, an workload deploying your on-premise open stuff, right? we want to make sure that we can find one policy that stretches all of these different endpoints. Right? And so at the end of the day, I can say you can only talk to this open stack workload from your iPhone right? if your password is long enough and uh, you know, the iPhone is managed or something like that. Right? Or, you know, you have your Galaxy and uh, you know, you're talking to, to an Amazon workload. You, you can only do this if you're a user that is in the system administrator work group, then you can establish an SSH connection group to the cloud. Right? I think that is the future of networking. Defining logical networks that span very different, different types of endpoints, but in many cases, you don't control um, the, the hardware anymore. You know, for us as, as VMware, um, our product is NSX. You know, we, we announced earlier that we'll actually support um, you know, in addition to, uh, to uh, like eSphere today and uh, OpenStack environments, like KVM, 
as that we support today. We'll also start supporting cloud workloads and containers at that point. It's all coming out. And uh, you know, we also today already have mobile devices that you can integrate into these networks. And we're working on some, some exciting things around Internet of Things and, uh, and branch offices. And um, you know, for all of these, we provide you with basically a high degree of automation. So you can see the script, the, the, the deployment of these, uh, of these networks, and uh, you know, very powerful security controls. For example, we have stateless, stateful firewalling for all of these different networks. So one last thing I want to talk about is uh, OVN, uh, Open Virtual Network. So NSX is our commercial product, um, but uh, you know, we also have OVN, which is um, our open source um, flavor. And OVN will actually support many of the features here that I've talked about. So if you, I'm not sure if you've uh, seen what OVN has become. I think I briefly mentioned it when I was here last year. Uh, OVN today, um, you know, we have fully safe for firewall built in. We have a load balancer built in. We have a layer three and layer two networking. And we keep investing heavily there. And I think it's, uh, you know, if you, if you want a 100% open source solution, I would strongly encourage you to have a look at it. It's a great collaboration, you know, working with, uh, amongst others, Red Hat and Cisco on this project. So it's not just us, but, you know, everybody chipping in to build a really solid uh, sort of engine for, for providing virtual networking in the future. Okay, that's all I have. I hope we gave you a quick glimpse of the future of networking. Thank you. Thank you.